Hey everybody, welcome back to another land place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. We're doing good work with seven randomed wins in a row. This one's whipping around to the back half of the character roster. It's got me freaking. Never mind, it's a Zazzle. Everything is gonna be alright. Yeah. 19 RZ7 EVQ. You know what? I'll take an early Bombus. It's compound interest, baby. Look it up. Provided that's not Bumbo. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, yeah, it's not Bumbo. It's, uh, I mean, it's still... Decent. No doubt about that. I forgot this is, uh... What is this guy's name? Little Monstros. That's it. Okay, well, we got... A little bit baited there. Um, how dare they not change the item icons at all, but... Make them similar enough that occasionally I get confused about it. It's very selfish. It's all a conspiracy. As usual, the developer trying to keep me down. It's hard being public enemy number one, man. No one knows what it's like to be the bald man. The not so tall man. Who's playing Isaac? Doesn't really work. Doesn't really work at all, honestly. That is probably a library. Everything's okay so far. You know, I've kind of come to the idea, um... One range up doesn't really mean much as a Zazel. Like, obviously you want extra range. But I really think unless you can get something that, that truly, you know, it takes you to the next level... We're probably gonna replace Shears with whatever these books are, but we'll see. Unless you can get something that takes you to the next level pretty quickly. Um, well, I mean, step one here. Dude, honestly, I actually think I will roll the shears. But I am happy, um... I mean, I'm happy we got Bookworm for sure. And Satanic Bible is immediately usable, but the shears are just like a little bit more interesting, I think. Now, if we wanted to be like truly good players, we would leave and um use the battery charge on Satanic Bible, which is actually a, a fairly astute plan. Why am I not doing it then? We've come too far. <laughs> Can't go back now, that's like three rooms ago. Um, I, I like the Shears as an item though, it's, it's very good offensively. And to be honest, the number two choice right now would be Satanic Bible, and there's nothing wrong with Satanic Bible. Um, quite the opposite, it's an extraordinarily good item. Very, very good defensively. Uh, and, and a little bit offensively as well, to be honest with you, but I just think Shears is more interesting. I don't think there's, there's too much of a debate happening about that. So, on this floor, I will peep this real quick. Um, we could buy Buddy in a box. And our other choice is five extra bombs. To be honest, I don't really care about missing out on those. In fact, I wouldn't even say we've been missing it, Bob. No shears required. What do you got for me? Nothing of value. Admittedly, we could have taken duality. And now I'm thinking maybe I should have taken duality. So in my head, I'm trying to, you know, reverse engineer some revisionist history for why I didn't take it. All I'll say is HP is, you know, is modestly precious right now. So if we can avoid um, putting the life at risk for... Things that may or may not even be useful for us later on, I would prefer that. Now, I am going to take the pill. Sure. And I will Hermit card. And I will probably purchase nothing. Because of the fact that uh, Curse of the Blind means, you know, relatively limited money. I don't really want to spend it right now. And we will take Store Key. Because I don't even know what the other trinket does. Your Isaac Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen. I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Today is a Wednesday. Um, been keeping up with the gym routine. It's got, you know, endorphins to some extent coursing through my veins. I guess you could say it's pretty serious, because I watched a documentary on eight-time Mr. Olympia, uh, Ronnie Coleman, last night. If you're not familiar with Ronnie Coleman, he's, I mean, arguably one of the greatest bodybuilders ever that has ever lived. I was going to say ever made. <laughs> That's how you know I work in the games industry. That phrase is like muscle memory. Um, excuse me? Mini Mush. 
Actually, a range down is Azazel, but, you know, thought there was a chance for Magic Mush, so why not? Um, I don't idolize bodybuilders by any stretch of the imagination. You know, I, it's, it's not what I want to look like. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little secret about bodybuilders. Unless they're competing, and I'm not saying this invalidates what they're doing. Like, the amount of work that they do and the amount of discipline they have is incredible. But um, there is a little bit of illicit narcotic use, anabolic steroids. There's a reason that the people who win the natural bodybuilding championships don't manage to, you know, do so well in Mr. Olympia. There's also a reason that Mr. Olympia doesn't compete in any natural bodybuilding championships. It's kind of like an unspoken... I, I recognize that, you know, without proof, this is, I mean, essentially slanderous, but it's, uh... You know, I've, I've had a, a an awareness of the industry. I've never been a part of it, obviously, because, I mean, look at me. Um... But, uh, you know, I've had an awareness of the industry since, like, the mid-2000s when I started working out for the first time. Um, of many. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was back when, when Ronnie Coleman was pretty much, like, still in his heyday when he was winning, like, Mr. Olympia every year. Um, so it was interesting to watch the documentary on him. And I think it it's a little bit of, uh, you know, it's on Netflix. It's, I, don't, I forget what it's called. It's a little bit of a, it's a soft piece of journalism for sure. Ronnie Coleman comes across as an extremely nice guy who is going through a lot of hardship in his life right now as a result Basically, he gave up his own physical health to become mr. Olympia, you know Turns out that the human body has a and I don't say this to be like a smart ass, but you know Oh my god these question marks dude You know years and years and years of squatting and deadlifting 700 pounds or more uh, six days a week, it turns out it puts some stress on some parts of your body, you know, the human body's a pretty versatile thing, but a lot of people, you know, he's in his mid-50s now, a lot of people, when they start getting up there, start to have some kind of degenerative injuries in the first place. My dad was, uh, not really like an athlete, but, uh, you know, he boxed a little bit and he played hockey, and, uh, even, even into his 40s, and... Now he's got, uh, he's had surgery once or twice, I think, for like pinched nerves in his backs, or in his back, and he's got a couple of hip-related issues that have thankfully alleviated. But, you know, I'm just saying, if, if it can happen to him, you know, who has been active, but also, you know, not been squatting 700 pounds six times a week, uh, it, it makes sense it could happen to Ronnie Coleman as well, but... It's always just interesting to see, like, the level... It's a different, uh... It's a different mold of humanity. You know, not just, like, genetically. They have, like, uh... You know, people who tend to rise to that level of bodybuilding have... You know, kind of like a genetic advantage to musculature that... Is unbeknownst to the rest of us. Like... You look at Ronnie Coleman or Jay Cutler. When they were, like, 14 years old, they had 28-inch pythons. You know, it's just... It's absurd. Um... But, uh, you know, it's just interesting to see the level of dedication that it was required to get to that point. Like, my man can barely walk at this point in his life. He still goes to the gym, like, six days a week. Almost to the point where you're like, you should probably not do this because it's causing you physical harm. But all of his doctors are like, I've advised them against it, but at the same time, you know, this is, like, the reason that he lives. This is what he lives for, is to be, like, a to be a bodybuilder so who am I to tell a patient like or I, maybe not who am I to tell a patient that's not really where I'm getting with this one but more like you know how can I tell a patient to like stop doing this this hobby that essentially like validates their life you know it's unrealistic so instead we're just gonna try to treat it anyway I this is not a must-watch documentary by the way But, if you got nothing else to watch, <laughs> by all means. It's different than Pumping Iron. If you've ever seen, if you've never seen Pumping Iron, Pumping Iron, you know, it's a documentary about uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 70s uh, training for uh, Mr. Olympia. And it's, uh, it's great, and there's some drama involved, you know? It's like a Christopher Guest mockumentary. Some of the drama, I'm sure it's like King of Kong, where it's like a little bit manufactured, but simultaneously... 
you know, it's like a, it's, it's got a real story going on to it as well. Whereas, uh, you know, this one is more just like Ronnie Coleman lifting weights. Anyway. I don't aspire to that level. And I mean, I mean no disrespect for it. I mean, I've, <laughs> it's a caricature of myself to even be like, yeah, I've been working out for three weeks. I watched this Ronnie Coleman documentary. To be honest, I don't think I'd ever want to be that big. You know, it's, it's a little bit ridiculous. I've been going to school. I'm in junior kindergarten. To be honest, I don't think I'd want to be as smart as Albert Einstein. Just seems like a lot of work, you know? I'll settle for being just like, you know, above average. It's a little self-serving. But anyway. I'm just, I'm making conversation, alright? When you're making conversation in a 40 minute long episode, you don't have the luxury of not saying stupid things that pop into your head. You have to say them. If you don't say them, things just get very, very quiet for a period of time and you find yourself uh, in times of trouble. Lift a big weight, Ronnie C. Teach me how to deadlift. Ronnie C. Eight time Mr. Olympia, Ronnie C. Now you're gonna laugh, but there actually is an original song about Ronnie Coleman in that movie. It's, a, it's an original bespoke rap song. I forget what it is. It's like, don't tell me what to do, because I'm like Ronnie Coleman. Like Ronnie Coleman. Like Ronnie Coleman. Anyway, he also worked as a, I mean, he seems like a, a, like a nice guy to begin with, but the first two years that he won Mr. Olympia, he was also working for like the police department as a cop. And I can just imagine, you know, you're getting pulled over for speeding or something like that. And a, a 300 pound Ronnie Coleman, two time Mr. Olympia comes out and <laughs> is like, you know how fast you were going? And you're like, I will tell you whatever you want to know. Please just don't crush my head between your hands. In fact, I think that's what police departments should do. They should just exclusively hire bodybuilders. Actually, it's kind of like um, my, my hometown. A couple of uh, guys who were up to no good and started causing trouble in the neighborhood. You know, when they hit their, like, mid-teens, late-teens, they got really into weightlifting, and now they actually are police officers. Which, I think, uh, is something that I don't even want to comment on. I'm just happy they have more constructive influences in their life now. Um, and I'm not saying anything about the fact that I think it probably was a natural fit for them based on their tendency to bully. Now. What do you got here? I don't want to open that. I want to... I really, really, really want to zigga zigga ah. I wish I hadn't opened it. You know what we want on this run now? And we're so close to greatness. Um, Dark Bum. Dark Bum will take us where we need to go. I would settle for also just like, and this is a little bit of a big ask, but like if I could double my damage output. Feels like I'm walking uh, I walked through him. I feel like doubling my damage output is, is, it's a heavy ask, no question about it, but it would be an enormous help for me personally. Um, if we're not going to get range upgrade or defense, then to have a, you know, the means to uh, kill enemies before they become a, a genuine threat would be, would be nice. Okay, thank you for that. You know he's paying out is the thing. Probably won't pop addicted here. Probably stop after this play. Yeah. Why did I even pick it up? <laughs> Ooh, baby! Holy Mackinac! Finally! I actually think it was worth it. We paid over market price for sure, because if it showed up on a deal with the devil, we would get... Um, Demon Baby for three Spirit Arts. We probably gave like five, maybe even more. Um, but I think we have the Spirit Arts for now, so I'm willing to I'm willing to let them ride. I'm trying not to get too attached to the fact that uh, you know I've got a a little bit of a streak going on here. None of the runs have been 
spectacularly difficult, or spectacularly good play for that matter. Um, but been building something, you know, something solid. We're on Dank Depths 2 already. That's a pretty classic Azazel situation, though, now that I think about it. To be at this point, this deep into the run. So I'm trying to uh, abuse the fact that we're actually, like, you know, with Little Baggy, we're at a big disadvantage. But we can also use that to, to harvest some pills from Skulls. And I'm not talking about the 1999 movie starring Joshua Jackson. Just want to get that pill out of the rotation. So, on any Azazel run, it's never really about, like, um, you know, are you strong enough to beat Mom? That's, that's other characters' domains. As Azazel, it's always about, like, don't shoot too much of your wad here until you're, um, you know that you're safe on the later floors. And don't get overconfident, you know, there's always, like, a certain temptation to be like, oh, we're so strong, I'll go fight the Hush. I actually feel like that has led to me losing as Azazel more than I've lost as some other characters that really, I mean, to be honest with you, should be substantially easier. So we've made what I consider to be the right call here. Really, really upped our damage. Picked up Mom's knife. I mean, we asked for a double damage. How could I not take Cricket's head? Lusty Blood. I don't even want to mention the fact. Lusty Blood is also an amazing choice. Especially from a damage standpoint and can lead... Or a defensive standpoint, I should say. And can lead to double damage very easily. On long rooms, at least. But... Uh, I'll take the raw damage this time. Which, now that it, the more I think about it, the more I think that was actually probably demonstrably the wrong decision. But, uh, well, I love this room. <laughs> By the way, pop some shears, dude. What are you waiting on? Too many Isaac bosses messing with my shears. I should stop singing a little bit. I apologize. I'm in a good mood, you know? It's, uh... It's like, uh, Elwood said in Legally Blonde. Exercise releases endorphins. Endorphins make people happy. Happy people don't kill their husbands. If L Wood said it, it must be true. Legally Blonde, you know, I it's gone through a little bit of a revival lately. I don't know if I'd call it a cult classic, mostly because it... I mean, it doesn't really fit what I would describe as the definition for a cult classic, which would be like, you know, not made for mass consumption, but found an audience of, of diehard fans in spite of it, maybe. Um, it was definitely made for mass consumption, and was also like a, a financial success of modest degree at its release in the year 2003. Um, but, I think it has one of the all-time worst sequel bylines of all time. Subtitles, maybe, is a better word. Um, you know, Legally Blonde? Legally Blonde 2. Red, White, and Blonde. I just... There's so many. I, I Sequels, you owe it to not screw up by making a pun your, your subtitle, right? Speed 2. Cruise Control. Because it's on a boat. Why not just call it Speed 2? Miss Congeniality 2. Armed and Fabulous. What does that even add to the... I think it actually makes people less likely to see the movie. And I'm not a scientist of, of movies. Merely, uh, I, I dabble. But, um, I mean, I did star in the second highest rated short film on IMDb. Maybe you've heard about it. It's called Dragon Slayer Doppelganger. It's, it's going to hit the festival circuit this year. Um, guaranteed. Bank it. That's why do you think I've been hitting the gym? I'm reprising my role as uh, Tonto. That's right. I had to think about the script. Oh, Tonto, you're just as sweet as the first time that we met. Ugh. Yeah, baby. My muscles burn like my love for you. <laughs> I, I got the whole script memorized. Don't even question it. Not to mention the banger soundtrack. I don't know how Mouth got the rights to, you know, the Beach Boys, uh, Tears for Fears. Something's happened and I'm head over heels. I'll never find out till I'm head over heels. 
Great song. Introduced me to that song, actually. Well, this run is really, um, it, it, let's be honest, it's become a lot easier. Mom's knife plus 16 damage. We pretty much, I mean, we, we got what we asked for, which is double damage. And to be honest, we probably got even more than double damage. Am I going to fight Hush? No. You know why? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little lesson in self-esteem, self-worth. I'm not going to fight Hush. Because I'm no longer afraid to share my opinion that the Hush fight is, in my opinion, I don't want to say badly designed. I see this happen all- I've seen it happen so much with Four Souls, and it, it just- I mean, I don't want to insult my friends, but it rattles me sometimes. And it's fine, you know, just because we're friends doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. But I've seen people play Four Souls, not just Austin, but also other people in the call. And they, like, draw a card, they've looked at it for five seconds, and they go, Bro, it's so broken! It's badly designed! Uh, you know, like, the game... I'm not saying Four Souls is perfectly designed. I think there are some design issues, like, namely the fact that you never know how long a game will take. Some of them take two hours, and some of them take under 15 minutes. Um, I think that that's, that's tough when you want to budget time for playing. I think that could be described as a design issue. And some of the cards might be broken. I just hate when, you know, you look at something for two seconds and you're like, I know better than the designer who probably, you know... Play tested this card ad nauseum. Doesn't mean it's above criticism. I'm just saying the criticism as to it, it works best when it comes from a place of knowledge, you know, a place of experience and a, a, a place of giving it a chance. And I'm not innocent of it either, but um, you know what? I'm just too lazy to clean up this room. You do it. So I don't want to say that it's badly designed. I will say that I believe the Hush fight is designed in such a way that I believe is antithetical to what I enjoy about the design of Isaac. Namely the fact that, uh, you know, you start out with a little dinky run where you don't know, you know, what's going to happen. And then by the end of the run, you run the risk potentially of becoming, you know, a, a god. And if I'm stunting, I want to go to a boss fight that lets me, uh, you know, style on a tough boss and maybe get some rewards for it. I don't want to go to a boss that's like, hey, I've neutralized all your advantages just to bore you. It's the same reason I don't really want to go fight Delirium. I'm sorry to say it. It doesn't compromise my enjoyment of the game. It just means that uh, maybe I'm going to stop thinking of those bosses as like an always boss and uh, maybe even stop thinking of them as a sometimes boss and start thinking of them as an almost never boss. And if you watch the Isaac content for the Hush, I'm sorry. I mean, there's at least hundreds of episodes for you. Maybe thousands. Because, I mean, this is, we're on episode, like, close to 1,200 of Afterbirth Plus. And Afterbirth Plus has only been around for, like, you know, half of Isaac Rebirth's total existence. Which is, I mean, we're good. I don't expect you to go back and watch, watch the Flash episodes. <laughs> I don't, you know, for what it was, it came out back in 2011. It's a long time ago. Um, you know, they, I'm, that's why I'm glad they made Rebirth, for sure. Is that uh, at the time, we were like, well, it's kind of a weird decision uh, to be remaking a game that only recently came out. And then when Rebirth came out, uh, I believe everybody on planet Earth went, oh, I get it now. This is substantially better. <laughs> But if you want to, you can. I mean, I'm not going to stop you. If the frame rate doesn't make you nauseous, I don't know how it didn't make me nauseous at the time. But womp womp. Midas Touch is actually uh, it's very good, but we need the invincibility. How are we going to get the invincibility to make it tick? Great question. Don't have a good answer. Don't have any answer. I got no answers. I'm like Jeopardy, you know? No answers, just questions. That's the opposite of Jeopardy. <laughs> it's the only show where they give you the answers. And you have to come up with the question. I don't want to talk too much more about Jeopardy. I have been watching it on the regular. I find it a very enjoyable show to watch. I will say... I believe if they could reboot Jeopardy... I mean... <sighs> 
This might get me in a lot of trouble. It's probably the most controversial thing I've ever said. Jeopardy exists now by virtue of being a consistent quiz show and also the only game of its type on the air. Most game shows on the air are designed to appeal to what I would... I don't want to call it the lowest common denominator because I think that's very insulting. But, you know... Here's a, why do I like Jeopardy way more than Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Way more than, you know, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? It's because the whole show is about questions. It's not really about the money until the end. On those shows, it's all about, like, is this person going to become a millionaire? On Jeopardy, they're giving you every 30 seconds. Question, question, question. Actually, probably more like every 15 seconds. That's why I like it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you think the like button, it's a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See you.